We're an impatient society. Everything has to be done fast. The results have to come fast. Otherwise, we lose interest quickly. And it's because we're so impatient that we don't understand what patience is all about. When we're told to be patient, many times we think, well, it's a sign that we just shouldn't care about the, the results. That we don't have to be so committed to the practice that we can let things take their course whenever they want to. That's not what patience means. Patience means sticking with the causes of your practice, no matter how long it takes the results. In other words, you're resolute in doing the practice. You stick with it. You stay with it, slow and steady. The steadiness is important, because we often think that impatience means that you're not resolute, that you're not dedicated that you have a carefree attitude towards when things are going to come together, when the results are going to show. That's not what patience means. Resolution is part of patience. The word kanti in Pali, that we often translate as patience, also means endurance. It means that you stick with things, even when they take a long time to show the results. You don't get frustrated. You remind yourself that this is a path that takes time, because after all, we're unlearning a lot of habits that we've been indulging for a long, long time. So it only stands to reason that it's going to take some time to unlearn those habits. And the only way to unlearn them is to actually stick with the practice, be resolute in what you're doing. that firm resolution that's going to make the difference. John Tate talks about being patient like farmers. And those of you who have never lived on a farm, even you know that farmers don't have an easy life. They work hard, especially in Thailand where they don't have a lot of labor-saving devices. When the time comes to do what needs to be done, they have to do it quickly. In other words, when the rice, is, rice grains are ripe, you have to harvest them quickly before the, the mice and the rats get to them. And once they're harvested, you have to take care of them quickly. Winnow the rice, get it away in the granary before any late season rain comes to spoil the rice. So it's not a matter of being slow or casual, the patience of a farmer. The patience of a farmer is the sort that knows that you can't plant the rice today and expect to have the grains ripen tomorrow. It's going to take time. Fortunately, with farmers, they have experience. They know from the previous year how long it takes. We don't have that. We're working on something new, developing new habits in the mind. And sometimes we read about, or read the passages in the Satipatthana Sutta about how you can get awakening in seven days if you're really dedicated. And it gives us sometimes unrealistic ideas about how quickly we should see the results in order to deem our practice successful. This is not to say that it's not possible, but most of the people who are going to get results in seven days have already gotten the results and they've gone to Nirvana, and that just leaves the rest of us here muddling along. But that doesn't mean we should be any less dedicated in our practice. Just realize that it's going to take time. Good things always take time. The trees that have the most solid hardwood are the ones who take the longest to grow. So we do the practice. 
focusing on what we are doing, rather than getting into a dialogue about when are the results going to come and what are they going to be like and how can I speed up the practice. Many times our efforts to speed things up actually get in the way. The practice is pretty simple. Stay with the breath. Allow the mind to settle in with the breath. Be friends with the breath. Allow the breath to open up and get more and more gentle, almost porous, so the mind can seep into the breath. Your awareness can seep into the breath. It's all you have to do. Of course, we want to add things on top of that in order to make the results come faster, but of course the things we add on top get in the way. So try to keep it simple. Just stay with the breath. If you're going, the mind is going to engage in any dialogue, engage in the dialogue with it about how the breath feels, remind yourself to stay with the breath, catching the mind when it's going to slip off. There's a lot of work to do, even when you keep it simple, just trying to keep the mind with the breath. Ask whether the, re the results are coming as quickly as you liked, or when the results do come, whether they're going to stay as long as you'd like them to. It's going to depend on what you're doing right here with the breath. Our desire to have them come, our desire to have them stay, that's not going to keep them here. It's the actual doing of the practice that makes a difference. There's a passage in the text where the Buddha talks about the hen sitting on its eggs, incubating its eggs, and whether or not the hen has the desire for the eggs to hatch. As long as she's incubating the eggs, they're going to develop. She has a little dialogue inside about how quickly she wants them to come and why aren't they coming faster than this and all those other questions that a hen probably doesn't even have the brain to ask. Our problem is we have brains. We do ask those questions, but they still get in the way. If you're going to ask questions, ask questions about what are you doing right now? Where are you going? Are you staying right here? That's all you have to ask. Just be really consistent and really resolute in sticking with what you know you have to do. If you find yourself flagging, learn how to give yourself pep talks, encouraging yourself along the way. Do what you can to keep the mind right here as consistently and as steadily as possible. And it's consistence that builds up momentum. And although we'd like the momentum to build up fast, sometimes our minds are pretty massive. And it's the massive minds that take time. So try to streamline things as much as you can. Stay focused, stay resolute in what you're doing. And as for the results, that's what you're patient about. Don't allow yourself to be patient or tolerant of vagrant thoughts that will pull you away from the breath. The patience has to apply to the process of causality, in the sense that you can't push the results to come unless the causes are right. Sometimes the causes take a while to get together, to come together. But you can rest assured that when they do, they'll bring the results without your having to have a lot of preconceived notions about them. When they do come, don't abandon the causes. When the mind finally does get a sense that it's settling in, feels comfortable, don't leave the breath to Focus on that sense of comfort. You know, the comfort's there. You can think of it spreading through the body, but spread through the body through the breath. If you abandon the breath, it's like demolishing the foundation of a house. You want to live in the house. You like the house. It's a comfortable place, but you let the foundation rot away. The house isn't going to last very long.
So the focus should always be on the causes, and as you, you should apply yourself to the causes with as much resolution and as much commitment as you can muster. Let go of your thoughts about how long you've been practicing, what the results used to be in the past. Focus on what you're doing totally on what you're doing right now. <laughs> 